Marcy Dermansky suggests that everyone, including yourself, will end up disappointing you. I discuss this and more on today's episode. Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today I want to talk about a book that I read, um, and one that is about, uh, uh, it would appear to be kidnapping children, uh, and also um, sleeping with your uh, so-called friends' uh, uh, husbands and boyfriends. I am referring to Bad Marie by Marcy Dermansky, which was published in 2010. For those who don't know, Marcy Dermansky is an American author, white American author, uh, who um, uh, has been writing since the early 2000s. Uh, they've only written a handful of novels, uh, but they've won a number of awards and gathered quite uh, a bit of a claim for their work. Um, I've actually read one of Marcy Dermansky's books before. Um, I, I, I think I picked it up from my local library. Don't forget to patronize your local library. It was called The Red Car. I did not like it. <laughs> I thought it was too sort of unfocused, um, even though other people, uh, I think liked it. Um, I think it was, um, there were much more, much more people who liked it than, than didn't in, in, in most cases. Uh, but uh, what's interesting is this book, um, I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I will definitely be recommending it to you out there. And I also managed to find it randomly in my local library. Perhaps my picks aren't as random as I believe uh, that they might be. Um, but that, um, that, I guess that remains to be seen. Uh, but it seems to be uh, a very interesting author, even if I don't like some of their work. Uh, and to be honest, I kind of forgot about the red car. That's how much it left no impression on me. But this one might leave a, a more significant impact. Uh, we'll see about that. And so without further ado, let's talk about Bad Marie. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So Bad Marie focuses on Marie. Uh, she is an ex-con from a poor background. Uh, she went to jail because um, the, her, the guy she was dating at the time, Juan, had robbed a bank without her knowing about it, and they fled to Mexico. Uh, and she was going to get married to Juan, but eventually the police caught up with them and decided to uh, arrest Marie as well, even though she wasn't really uh, involved in the bank robbery. And um, she, like, uh, she ended up going to jail for about six years. Uh, and during that time, Juan went to jail and he killed himself because he didn't want to be there. Uh, and so Marie, Marie has gotten out. Nobody's really been there for her except for her friend Ellen, who she knows from high school. Ellen gives her a job, um, but Ellen doesn't really seem to trust her, mainly because Marie is an ex-con, but also because Marie slept with her boyfriend in high school. Uh, and Marie points out that he wasn't that great of a person, but Ellen is still upset. It's also worth noting that Marie comes from a poor background, whereas Ellen's family had money. They often took pity on Marie, but they refused to help her when she needed it the most. Uh, and so Marie doesn't really think too highly of Ellen ultimately. However, Marie does have an attachment to Ellen's daughter, Caitlin, who she is babysitting uh, and really seems to enjoy her job. Uh, but uh, during one night, Marie is drinking on the job, and when she, when um, Ellen gets home, she sees that uh, Caitlin is still in the bathtub while Mar Marie is sort of passed out, and um, Ellen decides to fire her at, at that point, but keeps her on until they find a replacement. Um, and Ellen says that she's willing to give Marie some money as a, as a sort of parting, uh, sort of severance pay bit. Uh, but Ellen warns her not to sleep with her current husband on the, on the way out, a man named Benoit Doniel, uh, who Marie notices is already eyeing her because he seems to be interested, another terrible person that Ellen has found herself attracted to. Uh, what's also interesting is that uh, Benoit ha wrote uh, one of Marie's favorite books that she read in prison, Virginie at, uh, at Sea, um, which um, really spoke to her. 
Uh, and when she tells Benoit of this, he, he kind of falls in love with her or becomes infatuated with Marie. They begin sleeping together, and this love affair eventually results in them fleeing to uh, Paris, uh, where he's from, with Caitlin. Um, and uh, Ellen kind of senses what's going on, and so she's calling uh, Benoit as they board the plane. Uh, he listens to the voice messages where she says she's going to have uh, Marie thrown in jail because she thinks uh, uh, Marie is responsible for all of this, but she's willing to take back Benoit, which doesn't seem like the best idea. They end up flying to uh, f uh, France. They run into an actress named Lily Godet, Godet, or something like that, who has a past with Benoit. They both grieved when um, Benoit's sister uh, killed herself. Uh, when, when they were younger, uh, and they, they even had a relationship, but Benoit seems to have fled to America uh, to move beyond all of that. Uh, but Lily wants to resume her relationship with Benoit, which makes Marie unhappy, but Marie notes that she doesn't want to compete with Lily because she's already won because she's in Paris with Benoit at this point. They end up going to Lily's home, uh, and um, Benoit is kind of sleeps with Lily again, um, which upsets uh, Marie. She ends up taking um, Caitlin out to go about Paris, and Benoit catches up to them and, and tries to uh, fix things. Uh, but it's at this point that we learn that Benoit actually didn't write Virginia at Sea. That was what his sister had written, which uh, Marie makes says makes sense because, of course, she would respond to someone who had written a de uh, depressing novel and who was so close to killing herself. Um, maybe that's what's going on for Marie a little bit. Uh, we also find out that Ellen is heading to Paris. Marie becomes disillusioned, as does Benoit, as he's wondering who exactly he's with when he finds some of uh, Ellen's stuff has been stolen by Marie. Uh, but uh, while they're at a hotel, Benoit seemingly disappears and goes back with Lily, uh, and Marie is left with Caitlin, who um, they, they seem to be bonding, but Caitlin is preferring to be with her mother more and more, who isn't there. Uh, Marie takes her uh, throughout Paris a little bit more. She even steals a stroller so Caitlin can be in that, uh, which is not a, a good move. Uh, and they decide to take a train to Nice, France. Uh, along the way, uh, Marie runs into a man named Eli Longworth, who says he's an actor, uh, but Marie has been in jail and doesn't really know any of the actors at, at this time. But he takes a shine to her and invites um, her, them, uh, Caitlin and Marie, to stay with him. Uh, and they have a good time until the paparazzi catches up with them and uh, Eli's publicist calls and says, you know, why are you with these people? Um, this is going to cause a scandal because you're he's he has a fiance. And so he asks uh, very meanly for Marie to leave, uh, which they do. But they don't really have a lot. And so uh, at this point, whatever money um, Marie does have, she decides to take to a flight to Mexico with Caitlin. Uh, and uh, she wants to see Juan's family, uh, her, her almost husband or her husband, um, and hoping that he, they will take her in because she had such good memories of the place. But when they get to Juan's family's home, they, she, she discovers that they live in poverty now uh, because times have, have, have grown hard and they don't really want her around because they view her as responsible for his death even though it wasn't her idea to have that to have that bank robbed uh, and so she decides to leave and walks along the beach with Caitlin and Caitlin be begins to get unhappy because she wants her mom and Marie decides to just leave Caitlin at, uh, at a point sort of digging in the sand uh, and she walks into the sea trying to kill herself but she realizes she doesn't want to die and so she re returns back to Caitlin who who feels a little better at this point and so she decides to go to a nearby hotel and stays there uh, by uh, using the stolen credit card that she stole from Eli Longworth, which is funny. Uh, and as the story comes to a close, Marie senses that someone's bound to catch up with her at this point um, uh, because of the credit card that she used. Uh, and she knows Caitlin will go back with Marie, whether or not Caitlin, or Caitlin will go back with Ellen, whether or not Caitlin remembers her remains to be seen. Uh, but um, it, it sort of ends on a, on 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 that moment where you're wondering if there's going to be any redemption for Marie here. In terms of analysis, there is a fair bit to talk about with this story. Uh, you know, it's called Bad Marie, and uh, I don't think Marie is as bad as maybe some of the uh, the um, review quotes um, say she is. I, I think there's somewhat of an effort to make her appear like um, palatable, uh, because if, you're, if your character is too unlikable, people aren't going to want to read it. 
Uh, but Marie certainly isn't a good person by any means, and I do have to give Dermansky credit for writing a, a troubled character like her. A big theme of this story is that of, of the idea of being let down. Uh, people not being who they say they are on the surface. Uh, Marie faces disappointment from everyone in her life. Uh, she faces it from Ellen because Ellen, uh, you know, her family offered her so much but never really helped her when she needed it. Uh, and disappointment from, from her mom because her mom always sort of sided with other people. And when she got out of jail, her mother wasn't even there. And it seemed like her mom sort of was like, serves you right, like you, you, you belonged in jail, uh, which is not really something you want to hear from your mother. Uh, she's kind of let down by Benoit. After all, he claims to have written the book that um, that she loves, and it turns out that he didn't write that, that he's not who he claims to be. Uh, and then um, she's let down by Eli Longworth, who seems like a great guy, but he really only seems interested in sex. Um, and, um, you know, he just kicks her out. So uh, kind of a, a hard goodbye there. And then yeah, she's d let down by Juan's family, who view her as responsible for uh, the son's death. Uh, so everyone in, in, in her in her in, in her life is disappointing her is 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 not helping her and is is act tr trying to push her away and not really who they they seem or who they even live up to be in in her memories which is probably more on her but um you know if these people can't live by even a decent standard you know th that's disappointing uh, and so, like, it, it, what's interesting is not only is it those people who are letting her down, it's also Ellen, her, or sorry, Marie herself. Uh, like, she realizes that, you know, she's doing these awful things, these bad things, and she feels upset by it, um, upset with herself, and so she's disappointing herself. She can't really rely on anyone, not even herself, which, uh, you know, puts her in a sort of troubled state, I would say. Uh, and th this all kind of spills over into the the ultimate book that's that um, she's focused on in this story, Virginia at Sea, about a young girl who like falls in love with the sea otter that she's helping and spends she spends time with and it feels great, but uh, ultimately she just chooses to walk in, uh, into the sea at the end of the story and presumably kill herself. And this is a very deep and meaningful book for Marie, which is troubling and we can unpack a lot of that, <laughs> but um, like uh, ultimately that the book doesn't mean what she thought it meant. And that leads to probably a big climax at the end of the story. Allow me to read you an interesting quote from this. She wanted to breathe, she came up for air. It was all very romantic for Virginie to poetically disappear off the page, but the ending of Virginie at sea, it was complete and utter bullshit. Marie had been deceived, deceived by Benoit Doniel, deceived by his dead suicidal sister. Anybody could write a better book than that. And I, I think that that's really two things right there, highlighting the, the disappointment she feels with others, uh, but also maybe like a, a compulsion to survive. Even though she wants to end her life, she realizes it's probably um, it's probably not that easy. It's it's um, uh, or not it's not not that it's not easy. It's it's that um, like ending your life doesn't really end end it there like or maybe the, the human desire to survive is is far greater and and you can't really surpass that so you have to keep living whether you want to or not it could be any number of things there um but ultimately like she's disappointed by this book and it seems like maybe from there like living with all that disappointment she can go through a rebirth and hopefully become a better person or maybe she's sort of accepting her fate and that you know she's way in over her head and now she has to deal with the consequences of everything she's done throughout the story and i think what ultimately dermansky is might, might be getting at here is that the world feels very cold and there's that desire to maybe kill yourself but death is not the answer uh death again like like death is is i wouldn't say that it's too easy it's just that not, you may, not everyone can necessarily do death like it's uh it's um it's not really an, a, a possibility for marie who feels a, a desire to just keep going to to move on from every hurt that she's dealt with and keep going uh and so even though death would solve 
well, I wouldn't say it would solve her problems, but it would certainly take away these problems that she's dealing with. It's not something that's really a possibility for her. So she has to continue to deal with this cold world and, sh and persist even through, all, through, through these hardships she's dealing with. Much of the story is also psychological. Uh, so uh, th what this means is that most of the story is taking place, um, or you see a lot of what's happening inside Marie's mind. Uh, you see that she for, tries to follow as best as she can a no regret lifestyle uh, where she doesn't regret doing anything. She just does something and she sort of lives with it. Uh, and she um, she doesn't really, you know, feel sad about anything that happens. Like she cheats or she has an affair with Benoit and she doesn't really care what happens with Ellen. But um, I, I do think that to some extent, like that's a facade um, that she puts on to maybe deal with with the consequences of her bad actions. Like she pretends not to be upset, but she you see as time goes on in the story, she gets angrier and angrier, more frustrated. And at one point, she's like, "Oh, I guess Ellen has won. Her her husband has uh, you know ditched me, and her daughter doesn't even want to be with me." So um, you know. Uh, I, I, I guess to some extent she does care. And there's that you see that through the anger that she feels towards other others in her life. There's a lot of that anger and that frustration and sadness um, that, that is sort of underlying Marie um, that would lead someone to suicide. But as we saw here in the story, she couldn't do it. Uh, I think um, I think that's that she still might try it later on, but for now she feels like she has to continue. Um, and 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 keep pushing forward and trying to live her life as best as she can. Um, but it doesn't help that she also has these suppressed emotions that you see throughout the story, especially for Juan, who died. Like she, every time she thinks about Juan, who who killed himself in prison, like her mind diverts away from that, and she she tries her, her best not to think about how she was very happy and wanted to marry Juan and was ha life was pretty good until she. Um, until uh, like like the police caught up with them and and Juan went to prison and and, and died there, uh, and and so there's a lot of internal suffering that um, Marcy Demransky is really good at writing there. It's also important to look at the the attachment that she has to Caitlin as it pertains to her own psychological state. Why does she love Caitlin so much? Um, she can barely take care of herself. Why is she so attached to this to this child when she can't become attached really to anyone else? Um, and so you, there's a lot of good explanations I think you could throw at this story. Uh, I think it might be somewhat a sense of delusion that she has her life together because, you know, this child's here and she's doing a great job. But every so often that delusion falls apart when Caitlin wants her mother or when, like, Caitlin does something that Marie can't really handle, like um, when Marie has to change her diaper inside of a French McDonald's, she's not doing that great of a job. And the delusion kind of breaks and it's like, why am I here? Why did I take this child who doesn't belong to me? Um, it, it's only then does she become cogni cognizant, um, aware of, of what's going on. Uh, it's, I think there's also a sense of ambition here where she wants to prove that she's able of taking care, she's able to take care of herself and she's also able to um, somewhat thrive in her life. And I think the way she thinks that she can do that is by taking care of, of Caitlin, a life other than her own. And um, I, I think there's there's some proof that she can do that. But again, as, as the story goes on, uh, like it, it's very clear that she's struggling. She barely has any money as she's flying to Mexico to really help um, to, uh, to really help Caitlin uh, to get her what she needs. And so there's that ambition, but she's she's falling just short of it. And then um, maybe another explanation is that Caitlin is her, or she views Caitlin as a sort of younger version of herself where anything is possible and she wants to help Caitlin avoid all the pratfalls she went through uh, where, where life sort of beat her down. And she wants to maybe shield uh, Caitlin from that. And I think she does somewhat of a good job, but kidnapping her is not really that way, the way to, to do all of that, unfortunately. So she's 
probably making Caitlin's life a little bit worse if she remembers anything, because children are really good at forgetting um, things, especially at, at very young ages. At the end of the story, I think a question that you can you can ask as uh, Marie is is sort of at the hotel, maybe waiting for the authorities to close in on her, is is there a chance for redemption for Marie? Uh, and I think the obvious answer is probably no, that uh, because Marie, um, like, you know, kidnapped a child, seduced a, ma a married man, uh, fled to, to Mexico, and then, like, imposed upon, like, Juan's family and, and at a time where they were, like, they had less, less resources. Like, Marie is doing a bunch of bad things that don't merit redemption. Like, she's gonna probably end up back in prison, and maybe she, she, she needs to go there to, uh, to sort of reform, if, if re reformation is really possible in the American prison system. But that's, that's what she needs. She needs, uh, you know, mental health help, obviously, from a lifetime of, of, of suffering, but also just she needs the skills to, to thrive in, 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 in the public world. Um, and maybe prison will offer her that, but um, mostly there, I don't think there's any redemption for Marie here. Um, but you, you might also argue that there is a sense of redemption because she was smart enough to realize that Caitlin needed help and that by using the credit card um, that she stole from Eli Longworth, which again, problematic, um, like she's like she's recognizing that and she's taking the opportunity to to get the authorities to take Caitlin and Caitlin will be transferred to her mother and she'll go to jail where she knows she probably needs to be. Uh, and so that's maybe that's like her sense of redemption right there. Uh, it's her recognizing her mistakes and, and sort of rising above them. But again, she did kidnap a child to get to that point. So maybe it's not it's not as wholesome as I as I think of it in my head. And while I do really like the story, I do think it needs maybe a sturdier resolution because the end of the story is just Caitlin in the hotel room sort of waiting for the authorities to close in on her, which, you know, open to interpretation about what goes on from there. Um, I, I, I think it's, um, it's an okay ending, but I, I do think I needed something sturdier, like maybe a confrontation between, um, Ellen and Marie, um, uh, where, you know, Marie rightfully gets called out or something like that, or like her being arrested, like something sturdy and her sort of thinking about what that arrest means. Um, her sort of everything finally catching up to her. Um, like the, the ending here doesn't really drag down the story at all, but I do think a more sturdier resolution could have really brought all these themes together and, and really like um, sort of nailed the landing that Dermansky is trying to do here. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Bad Marie by Marcy Dermansky. A pretty solid uh, story, um, one that is that is pretty good. I, I think I'm gonna uh, th be thinking about this for uh, a little bit of time. I, I definitely recommend it to you out there. Uh, if you're if you go to the library and you find it, it's probably worth checking out. Um, as um, it's a um, it's a pretty solid and well-written story. And if you're someone who likes, you know, psychological stories like the story Passing by, uh, by Nella Larson, I think you might prob you might, you might enjoy this as well. Uh, so overall, a, a pretty, a pretty decent book. Uh, anyways, if you have anything to say about my review here, or you just want to simply comment on something I've said, uh, let me know in the comments below. We'd love to have a conversation with you about this. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this author or this book if they don't already know. Uh, also, join the Discord if you want to have further conversations about books, movies, TV, and other such things. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and bad travels. Farewell.